Oh, Sarah, Cynthia, Sylvia, Stout would not take the garbage out. She'd wash the dishes and scrub the pans, cook the yams and spice the ham. And though her parents would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. And so it piled up to the ceiling, puffy grounds, potato peelings, brown bananas and rotten peas, chunks of sour cottage cheese. It filled the can, it covered the floor, it cracked the windows and blocked the door with bacon rinds and chicken bones, drippy and a ice cream cone, poon pitch, peach pits, orange peel, globby glumps of cold oatmeal, pizza crusts and withered greens, soggy beans and tangerine, crust of blackburn butter toast, grisly bits of beefy roast. The garbage rolled on down the hall. It raised the roof, it broke the walls. I mean, greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, blobs of gooey. Bubble gum, cellophane from old bologna, rubbly blubbly macaroni, peanut butter cake and dry, curdled milk, milk and crust of pie, moldy mallets, dried up mustard, eggshells mixed with lemon custard, cold french fries and rancid meat, yellow lumps of cream of wheat. <gasps> At last the garbage reached so high that finally it touched the sky and all the friends would come to play and all the neighbors moved away and finally Sarah, Cynthia, Sylvia, Steph said, okay, I'll take the garbage out. But then, of course, it was too late. The garbage reached across the state from New York to the Golden Gate and there in the garbage. But she didn't hate, but Sarah met an awful thing that I cannot right now relate because the hour is much too late. But children remembered Sarah Stout and always take the garbage out.